Who doesn't love a good puzzle? There is just something about puzzles, for some people at least. When you find one, you cannot rest until you have learned the solution, until you have solved it, until there is no mystery there left. That's one of the main draws of well, puzzle games for one, and adventure games as well. Finding a new problem and trying to figure out how to fix it. It's so much a part of who we are as human beings, as a species, that we keep trying to develop new things to keep our minds busy, to keep our minds always inventing new things and challenging each other through puzzles, through riddles, through every little knack that we can come up with. But puzzles have an inherent problem when we're talking about implementing them in video games. Well, in general, actually, you've solved it. You feel great. You feel smart. What then? What happens after you finish that puzzle? Well, you go on to a new one. And if there isn't any puzzle left, do you genuinely have a reason to replay this game? Well, maybe you'll like the characters, maybe you'll like the atmosphere, maybe you'll like the story and would someday like to relive it, but the puzzles will then just be a nuisance. You've solved them, you know what they are, they can no longer surprise you, they can no longer challenge you, their existence is just a waste of time, it's just something there preventing you from actually enjoying the game. And some people, that's what they are since the get-go, a nuisance. Especially when we're talking about the puzzles that used to be made back when our dear friend Moon Logic crashed headfirst into video games. To be fair, it sort of crashed headfirst into video games since Maniac Mansion, but at least at first, the lunacy of puzzles was part of the charm. Remember Monkey Island? Remember when you had to find a way to get across from one island to another when all you could see between them was a cable? Could I climb up and shimmy along that cable? No, I couldn't. Could I find a harness to use it as a zipline? Would you find a harness even to use it as a zipline in a world where there are zombie ghosts, pirates and voodoo? Of course not, you would use a rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. That's, that's complete nonsense, that is something so bizarrely strange that it makes no sense in our world, but in the world of Monkey Island, in the world of zombie pirates of grog that eats through mugs and it's made with battery acid. Yeah, that makes sense. That is part of the world. That is part of the humor. That is part of the charm. That may be a bit moon logic e, but that's a great puzzle because it, it does what a good puzzle should do. Even after you fix it, it's still funny. Even after you know what it is, seeing Guybrush Threepwood use a chicken with a pulley in the middle to travel between two islands is still funny. It won't be funny for the hundredth time, but it does its job. You know what it is and then it gets out of the way. But sadly, a lot of puzzles can't do that because they're, they're too complicated, they're too puzzle-y. And it still sort of has the core problem of, I've solved this already, what's the point of doing it again? There isn't. That unfortunate quality is plaguing adventure video games, or at least it plagued them up to a point. Why would someone replay this, knowing that the majority of what they're gonna do is puzzles? Why, in the current environment we have, why not just watch it on YouTube? Because they're gonna just have the puzzles be solved quickly by someone that knows what they're doing. We still get the, oh, what's he doing there? Oh yeah, the, yeah, that makes sense, I should have thought of that. And they'll get to enjoy all the dialogue, all all the cinematics, all the story. Well, developers would get upset if you do that. They already get upset if you do that, I mean. And I do kind of understand them. They spend a lot of time making that video game and people just upload a complete playthrough of it on YouTube and then there's nothing left for anyone to do that wants to buy it. There's no reason for them to buy it. And in a way you can say that the developer has a bit of fault here because they made a game that is easily perishable, a game that once played, once even seen played, has no value anymore. And that's probably the reason for the downfall of uh, 
traditional adventure games. There is no reason anymore, which is why companies like Telltale, once they caught a glimpse of something different, they just went for it. They abandoned traditional puzzles starting with the Walking Dead series. Puzzles were gone, they were dead, they were beginning to be simplified ever since I would say the second season of Seven Max. They were almost gone in the um, Back to the Future game and in the Walking Dead they were gone. They didn't actually have puzzles there, they had things you did. But the things you did impacted the story or at least impacted your perception of the story. They branched out, they made different storylines seem to occur. Different fates for characters, different interactions and that's not something you could see on YouTube in a single playthrough. It made it personal. It made something that you had to do yourself. You had to try yourself. You had to see, well, if I play this, what's gonna happen? How am I gonna react? What will I choose? What will happen if I choose different than the other guy did? So that's why you buy the game. That's why you play it yourself. And that's maybe why you replay it. And of course, if you do replay it, you realize that, well, your choices didn't add up to something all that important, but it took you a second playthrough to realize that. The game did its job, you played it twice. You got more out of it than you would have had if it was just another simple puzzle based game with a linear storyline. Now you may point out that Telltale isn't the first to do this. There's been adventure games with multiple threads of storylines and multiple paths ever since a oh, long time ago. Long long time ago. Quest for Glory, for example, which petered on being an RPG more than an adventure game. But I ask you, what, what's easier to make? A game where you have a class, where you have skills, where you have different ways to accomplish a quest to beat a challenge, or a game where there are none, where there are just some choices. I'll give you a hint, it's the style of game that is currently still being produced. Because although games like Quest for Glory and the recent actually Quest for Infamy were interesting in their ways, they were unique in their ways, they were good, the studio that made Quest for Infamy isn't around anymore. One, because the game wasn't all that popular or popularized and it still had some elements of adventure games that not necessarily all the people that compose the current audience resonate with, such as puzzles that require some lateral thinking and some more obscure understandings of video game logic. Which is a shame, because even though it's harder to do, the way you can solve puzzles being a problem is by making them approachable from different angles. Not just one specific solution, but multiple ones, depending on what the player actually understands of that puzzle. You could have the same outcome, you could have a different outcome, but just something that moves things along. And probably the absolute greatest game to implement that idea of puzzles was Portal. Portal as a game, as a puzzle game, is astonishing. It is superbly crafted because all the puzzles in it have a myriad of ways of being solved and oftentimes you don't even know that, you just see one solution. One that the game may have alluded to, the one that you believe the game was teaching you, but if you dig deeper, if you actually start understanding the game, or if you just watch someone play it on YouTube in 10 minutes, you realize you've been playing a different game. You realize that these puzzles can work on completely different levels than what you understand. That thinking with portals is just the beginning of it. And it wasn't just Portal. Mirror's Edge, the first one, was a similar affair. You believed you understood what free running was in that game. You've seen the trailers, you've seen the tutorial, you've played it. But when you see someone do some really Jackie Chan level stuff and there you realize, wow, there is a lot more to this game. I have to replay it. I have to relearn, rethink, redo everything. Not because you'll get a reward, not because you will unlock something different, but because it just expanded your horizon expanded your knowledge base, it just opened the game up, it blew everything away. And you can't do that with a puzzle about a rubber duck. Unless you could shoot the duck. I don't know, I, I kind of forget what it was used for. 
ensure uh, some of the solutions that players come up with are almost like in the cheating and just circumventing the actual rules of the puzzle, but there's nothing wrong with that. As long as the player is progressing and the puzzle is robust enough so that someone that's not breaking the rules can still do it, unless you go all meta and make them break the rules to prove some kind of point, there's nothing wrong with designing a puzzle that can be beaten through lateral thinking with, with the player's own moon logic, if you will. Some recent games have actually taken this to whole new levels, games like Super Hot, which is at its core a puzzle game, one that has very unique and interesting puzzles that involve killing people quickly and efficiently and dodging bullets. Or you have your more meta stuff like that oxen free thing with the pony something, I didn't play it, just heard about it. And there was another one with the um, side-scrolling hack and slash... I forget what it was, it was quite recent. So what's your take on puzzles? Do you see them as being a problem too? Or at least having a problem? Or am I just overthinking the reasons why they've been dropped from adventure games when the simple answer would be that a simpler game attracts a bigger audience? Even though Myst would say otherwise. 